thousands of other men of God, Protestant, Catholic, Jewish, were persecuted, arrested, confined in concentration camps. Our Fuhrer is the intermediary between his people and the throne of God. Everything the Fuhrer utters is religion in the highest sense. It is only on one or two exceptional points that Christ and Hitler stand comparison. For Hitler is far too big a man to be compared with one so petty. Every day in all German classrooms, Yes, take children from the faith of their fathers and teach them the state is the only church. And the head of the state is the voice of God.
way of life. Or better, the way of death. In that other world. Now, what of our world? The democratic world. What did we want? What did we do about it? First of all, we wanted peace and security. And to prove our sincerity, in 1921, we initiated the Washington Disarmament Conference. This resulted in two vitally important treaties. One, to reduce the size of the British, Japanese, French, Italian, and American fleets. And the other, the Nine Power Treaty, which guaranteed the integrity of China. And incidentally, one of the powers signing this was Japan. Later on, in 1929, we signed the kellogg Bean Pact, which was supposed to abolish war as a means of settling international disputes. This pact was signed by 47 nations, including Germany and Japan. President, I have the honor of handing you the London Naval Treaty. Faithful to our treaty obligations, We scrapped more than 60% of our naval tonnage. And our army was reduced to a standing force of 136,000 men, smaller than that maintained by the little state of Romania. We let our hopes for peace become so strong that they grew into a determination not to fight unless directly attacked. We let ourselves be influenced by those who said that we could find security through isolation. The confusion in our way of thinking is apparent in the slice of public opinion as it appeared in Pathé News in 1939. Another war, not for me. This time America should keep out, and I know I will. If war breaks out in Europe, I think that this country should heed the advice of its first president and avoid all foreign entanglements. I haven't the slightest idea of European affairs. In the event of war in Europe, I think we should stay out of it entirely. And all our efforts should be made to keep out of the fight. Let Europe fight our own battles. They mean nothing to us. We should mind our own business. By all means, no. Yes, fight. No. No. Yes. If my country calls, yes. No. We simply did not want to understand that our individual and national problems were, and always will be, dependent upon the problems of the whole world. And we had individual and national problems to worry about, plenty of them, just as Germany, Italy, and Japan had. But we faced them in a democratic way. We passed laws to give working men a chance to improve their lot. We established an insurance program for those without jobs. We began to give old folks protection against want and hunger. We organized the CCC to provide our young men with healthy and useful employment. A federal works program came into being and changed the face of our nation with new roads, bridges, schools. We built great new dams which brought the miracle of electricity to millions of our people. These were some of our accomplishments, but there were others not so creditable. We turned our backs on the League of Nations. We passed the Tariff Act to set a higher wall of isolation around us. We encouraged lawlessness with the farce of prohibition. But in spite of these mistakes, we never had a thought of losing our free institutions. John Q. Public still ran the country. He had his choice of voting for Dewey, Wilkie, Roosevelt, or anybody else. In Germany, they had the choice of voting for Hitler, Hitler, or Hitler. Over here, John Q. still read what he pleased. And although he heard of books being burned in other countries, he would have laughed if anyone had told him his books would ever be burned. And on Sunday, if he felt like it, John Q. went to any church he pleased.
most of all, he got a kick out of seeing his kids grow up. The average American was quite unconscious of the fact that some people had this in mind for the little John Q. Uh, tasty, tasty, you and me, I am. But you also got. children were being trained to kill, John Q's kids were giving their pennies to help them have life. And when we saw these men in the newsreels, quite often we laughed. To us, they looked like characters in a musical comedy. They weren't comic. They weren't funny. They were deadly serious. They were out for world conquest. And what made it doubly serious was that there were 70 million Japanese, 45 million Italians, and 80 million Germans, all hopped up to the same idea. Now, Deutsches Volk hilft dir selbst. Jesus will help them. Their leaders told them that they were supermen. Herrenfolk, the Nazis called them the master race, destined to rule all other peoples on Earth. Take a good look at these humorless men. These were to be the rulers of the ruling race. Leben, auch ihr bürgerliches Dasein ist gesichert in diesem nationalsozialistischen Staat der Ordnung. Obey us blindly, and you will attain your rightful place in the world. All other people will be your slaves. That's what they promised them, that Americans, Chinese, Russian, South Americans, all free peoples would work for them and make them rich. And how they ate it up. We shall restore the glory that was Rome. Today we rule Germany. Tomorrow the world. The Pacific is ours. It was inevitable that these countries should gang up on us. The little fellow is our pal, Kurosu, who smiled his way into our hearts in December 1941. Here he and his friends are busy carving up the world in advance, staking out their claims. Take a good look at these claims. Here was the Italy that Mussolini took over in 1922. And almost his first act was to tell the Italians they were the rightful owners of Corsica, Nice, Savoia, Albania, Tunisia, Ethiopia, and a land corridor linking it with Libya. Later on, he had an even bigger dream. The old Roman Empire as it existed nearly 2,000 years ago, to dominate all the lands adjoining the Mediterranean. Mare Nostra, our sea, they called it, just as the ancient Romans did. As for the Japanese, they had some ambitions too. By 1920, they had grabbed off Formosa, Korea, and the southern half of the island of Sakhalin. Then Baron Gishi Tanaka, the prime minister, carefully set down Japanese aims in a document called the Tanaka Memorial. It was presented to the emperor July 25, 1927. Here was their dream. Manchuria for raw materials, China for manpower, 
Then a triumphant march through Indochina, Siam, Burma, India, the East Indies, and on through Australia and New Zealand. And in the north, all they claimed was that part of Russia east of Lake Baikal. That was to be the new order in Asia. Then the Japs would move eastward to crush the United States and really start their co-prosperity sphere. Now take a look at the fight the Nazis reserved for themselves. Here's the Germany Hitler walked into. And here's what he wanted. First, Europe under his complete political or economic control, leaving...